Hello and welcome to another edition of the IU Film Room with Coach Adrania here. Uh, today we're looking at uh, the IU Butler game, uh, played just about 24 hours ago from the time that I'm recording this. Um, really slow start for Indiana, uh, especially defensively in the first half. Uh, that really allowed Butler to hang around, even have I think as much as a 7 or 8 point lead at one point in the first half. Uh, really turned it on in the second half, uh, got up by 15 or 16 points at one point, uh, ultimately leading to an eight-point victory for the Hoosiers. But in this film room, I'm going to look at uh, a couple different things. We're going to look at some of the plays that IU ran. I really liked the spacing. I think that's becoming more and more um, prevalent in IU's offense is just really good spacing. Also going to look at some things on uh, on the defensive end, especially in the first half that uh, of why Butler was able to, to create some – disadvantages for IU and really just IU not playing as well. Um, but yeah, so we're going to dive into about 14 clips here. Uh, so stay tuned. And as always, appreciate you watching. Please like, subscribe, follow, uh, do all that good stuff on all your social platforms. Uh, but we'll just dive in right here. First play we're going to look at is this first play in the game for the Hoosiers. Uh, Indiana calls this 14 short. You can usually hear Archie uh, barking it out when they're about to run it. But essentially what this 14 short means is uh, Race Thompson is going to set this ball screen here, and he's going to do what you call a short roll, which means he's not rolling directly to the basket, but he's rolling uh, short into you know the the slot kind of if you will here. Uh, so it's a simple action, but it creates really good spacing um, because what it does is as Race comes here, his man's hedging. So essentially, this guy here has to make a decision on if he's going to take away Race or if he's going to take away Al Durham. Ultimately, on this play, the guy just kind of decides he's going to take away Ray. So we'll just run it through. Ray short rolls. That guy has to stun at race. Creates great space for Al. Al knocks that shot down. So if we look at that one more time, race catches. Now this guy right here now has to make a decision. He at least has to commit to trying to stop race here. Race has a straight line drive to the rim. So as he does that, it creates great space. Race has a nice kick. Al Three catches in rhythm, goal. knocks it down. Wanted to uh, highlight this clip because I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, one of the benefits of not having fans in in these games is that uh, ultimately you end up being able to hear a lot more of what the coach is saying. So uh, Court Mike picked up Archie talking to Trace. Uh, ultimately, they're going to run this play called Stack 2. But Archie essentially explains to Trace, hey, you got to hit the hole, duck in, duck in. So just want to kind of play this clip because you can see what Archie tells Trace to do. You can see him do it. So you kind of know what this play um, is trying to accomplish. The freshman whistled for it. There's a good look at Archie Miller in his fourth season at the helm of the Hoosiers. Indiana 20 and 12 last season. Had a... They're saying hit the hole, hit the hole, stack two. So now let's run the clip. We'll show what he's talking about. To the NCAA tournament before the pandemic shut things down says this is his most familiar and experienced of the IU teams in regards to chemistry that he's had. So let's pause it. Right here is what he's talking about. So Trace is going to roll. And really what they're trying to do here is, is Trace is going to roll, turn, and seal. And this hole is what Archie's calling it. Race is going to come up here. And Armand's going to hit Race, and they're going to try to go high-low with, with Trace there. So that's kind of what they're trying to accomplish. That's what Archie's telling trace uh to hit that hole so really we run it the of this there he is he turns he pivots he hits the hole just like archie tells him to do they're trying to go high low here with race uh butler does a pretty nice job of, of guarding it he's got a couple so guys that have been around for an a armand bit. franklin three Jimmy just want to show that play because it kind of gives you uh some insight into to some of what archie's trying to accomplish on some of these plays ultimately that play was not to try to get armand franklin a three-point shot it was to try to get trace the ball uh down low on this clip, I like this action on what IU does. Um, I don't love the fact that uh, Race is occupying this ball side block here, uh, ultimately in the play. But what this play does is it creates what's called a tag issue, uh, which when Trace comes to set this ball screen here, his man's going to hedge out. So when Trace rolls to the basket there, whoever's taking Trace away is called a tag man. So this creates the tagging issue as we run this clip. For a couple of reasons. So, so Trace just set that ball screen. As you can see, his man has now hedged out onto Rob. So here's that. Trace is rolling to the basket. 
So Rob, Trace, or excuse me, Race is going to duck in here. So that's going to occupy this guy, obviously. Armand is in this corner, so he's obviously going to be occupied by this guy. So really, this guy is the only one that can tag, if you will, Trace Jackson Davis and take that away. Well, because Ra or Al is lifting here, this guy has to go with him, and it creates what's a ta called a tag issue on Trace Jackson Davis as he's rolling to the basket. So ultimately, as you're going to see as I run this clip, as Al lifts, it's just subtle, but now this guy is who's guarding Al can't really tag and take away Trace. So what you have is this lob opportunity. Not a great pass by Rob. Lob opportunity, though. Trace is still able to score it. Uh, so great spacing, great uh, roll replace action that creates a tag issue, um, ultimately resulting in two points for IU. Now we're going to dive into some of the bad that we saw from the Hoosiers. And it's, it's specifically in the pick and roll in the first half. Uh, a lot of confusion was created by Butler's movement um, and what they were trying to do. So as we run this clip here, we're going to see a dribble handoff, uh, which is essentially another – version of the pick and roll i want you to just watch race thompson he's way too straight up and down here on this action trying to take away the ball handler and it basically just creates an easy driving lane for the ball handler and butler's able to score two pretty easily it's hard to get his base strong he was too straight up and down last season i mean there's no other way around that uh then race thompson has to be able to stop the ball there and let everybody recover before he recovers back to his man he was kind of too worried about his own man ball's most important on the defensive end Ultimately, two easy points for Butler. Uh, that was way too easy and kind of kicked off some poor uh, pick-and-roll defense for the Hoosiers. Uh, I'm going to show this clip here for a couple reasons. A, it was bad pick-and-roll defense. Uh, B, for some of the, the comedy of, of Archie Miller here uh, screaming at Christian Lander. So, uh, basically, the coverage that I use in and they've employed most of the season is when there's a ball screen action, uh, between anybody between positions one and four, they're switching it a lot of the times. Uh, they're not switching with the five. So basically, Jerome Hunter's man set a little rub screen on Christian Lander. Christian Lander probably should have just stayed on Jerome Hunter's man in a switch. Uh, it sounds like I use calling this blue their action. Uh, usually, blue is is designated for ice in the NBA, but uh, it sounds like I use coverage is called blue when they're switching. And I say this because you can hear Archie Miller scream it like five times in a row here. So we're going to see this action. Christian Lander doesn't switch. Wide open three-pointer. Now I want you to watch and listen to Archie Miller here. Just scream blue, 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 uh, almost as if he is dying. So uh, listen closely. Even for a freshman as Coles lets three fly and snuggies it in. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Christian Lander obviously made a mistake there. Uh, as you can hear, Archie just screaming blue over and over and over. Uh, really getting the point home that Christian Lander, you should have switched that, resulted in a wide open three for Butler. So the next time down the floor, obviously Butler liked what they got out of that, uh, putting Christian Lander and Jerome Hunter in a ball screen, so they ran it again. And this time you're going to see Lander and uh, Jerome Hunter do switch it. Uh, Archie got that that point across uh, very loud and clear. So you're going to see him switch it. Now Lander's on uh, Jerome's man, Jerome's on Lander's man. It's right here, pause. Right here, in this instance, it might be okay for Jerome and Lander to switch back. But basically what they do, I mean, obviously, I use obviously going to try to switch back in situations they can because now Lander's guarding somebody that's a lot bigger than him, could post him. So I get... I use probably trying to switch back here, but not really great communication. It ends up being a super late switch, as you can see here. Way too late. Now Lander scrambling. Over commits. Two easy points for Butler. And about 30 seconds later, Lander got pulled, and we didn't see him the rest of the game. Uh, so that's obviously showing Archie kind of put that on Lander. Um, he had a couple really, really bad defensive possessions in a row. Archie obviously values the defensive end of the floor highly, and we didn't see Lander the rest of the game. So IU saw a lot of success in their blocker mover motion yesterday. And basically what a blocker mover motion is, is you're going to have a big on this block, you're going to have a big on this block, and then ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to allow 
this guy to come off these screens however he may wish. Uh, he can go to this side, and then it, so let's say Armand Franklin goes to this side, Galloway would come back over to this side. Uh, so it's creating balance on the floor, uh, but it, it's essentially allowing Armand Franklin to kind of roam free and use these two what you would call blockers uh, as his screeners, and he's able to roam free. I uh, saw a lot of success with this yesterday. Um, so this one is just Armand moving freely. He reads the defense, takes what the defense gives him. Race does a nice job of screening. Three points for Armand. Uh, just great movement. Uh, so we'll dive into some more blocker mover clips here right now. Again, in this clip, you've got your blocker. You've got your blocker. You've got Armand is, is the guy that's kind of running the action. So right now he's using this side of the floor. So And he's going back to the middle. So Galloway is going back to the middle of the floor. And then Galloway is just going to go to the opposite side that Armand goes. So... You're going to see Armand come off of this screen here from race. Armand comes around, and just a subtle show by the Butler guy creates a pocket for Armand to hit race Thompson. And because the floor is spaced and balanced, race doesn't have anybody to stop. A couple, eight blocks today. So a nice curl race. action. Just a little Davis show there from Butler. Days. Two points for race Thompson. Again, here we've got blocker. Blocker. Armand Franklin is the mover. He's going to end up going to this side, but Galloway does a nice job of recognizing race. Thompson has a great look. He's got a smaller guy on him in the post, so Al can just dribble over to him and look to feed him. The floor spaced. Race has a one on one with the smaller guy. Um, another great action from Indiana. Galloway does a nice job of staying spaced. Race catches. Then you see uh, right here that NZ came over to help on race. Race was a nice dish to trace. And you get a thunder dump. Watch that one more time. Because you see as soon as race does a great job. Because as soon as he commits here, this guy commits to race. He already sees Trace here. Nice little dump off. This guy didn't help the helpers, what they call it, on Butler. Great action. I think he was right nice by the dish. Right. Hammer at home. IU goes up 15. I talked earlier about IU creating tagging issues for Butler in one of their clips, and they do exactly that here in this clip as well. So we're going to see Trace Jackson Davis goes to set this ball screen here. So Trace is setting the ball screen here. The way Butler guards ball screens is this guy here is going to show. So basically what that's going to what's going to happen here is that as Trace rolls, Butler has to have a tag guy, which is Jerome Hunter's man here. But by Jerome Hunter not just staying put on this block and actually lifting up, so we see Hunter lift. As Hunter lifts here, and he's now just one pass away, Butler is still struggling to get back on Trace. Now Jerome Hunter's guy has to make a decision. Am I going to stay here, try to take Trace away? Or as Jerome Hunter lifts, am I going to leave him wide open for three? Uh, ultimately, he decides to go up with uh, Hunter. Butler's freshman Results guards. in Harrison nice pass team. and a dunk for Trace Jackson Davis. This play right here is a new one that uh, Indiana deployed yesterday that I have not seen them run this season yet. Uh, really, really like the action. I like it better if this guy right here is probably a Jerome Hunter, uh, just because I think he – historically is a better shooter than Race Thompson from the outside. But ultimately, I is going to get a wide open look on this. So the way this action works is you see Rob Fennessy coming here. You probably assume that he might be coming off a double screen here, but he's actually going to float to the corner to create some space. You're going to see uh, Al Durham is going to come off this screen and a dribble handoff from, Race Tom or from Trace Jackson Davis. Ultimately, it's going to cause a lot of confusion on the Butler end, as we're going to see here. So let's run the action. See if... So right here, we see Al probably could stop and pop there if he wanted to. I'm glad he doesn't. But So now you've got the guy guarding Al is, is chasing him. So Al's coming here. This guy has to – or somebody's got to step up and stop the ball. So basically, you've got one guy here that's going to try to take away Trace Jackson Davis going to the rim, which obviously you want to take away. And this guy is popping, which is Bryce Thompson popping to the top of the key. Well, because this guy is stopping the ball, this guy is chasing the ball, and this guy is taking away the roll, leaves Ray Thompson wide open for a three-point shot. We're going to see it. 
doesn't knock it down, but I love the action. So far they I mean, have. So much space for Ray Thompson. Thompson. Doesn't knock it down, but uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for that play because I really like the action from the Hoosiers. And we cannot talk enough about Armand Franklin becoming a shooting threat how much that opens up Trace Jackson Davis. And we're going to see it right here on this play. So Trace Jackson Davis catches well in the post. Served. I want you to watch the guy guarding Armand Franklin, which is this guy right here. This is about as close as he gets to Trace Jackson Davis. Armand does a nice job of creating space, which he got a little bit closer on the line there, which he does end up doing. But by Armand Franklin being a scoring threat, his guy that usually would be digging and possibly even doubling Trace Jackson Davis can't do it because he's going to leave a wide-open shooter. It just opens up so much more space for Trace Jackson Davis. Because you see the guy's just stunning. Now he's just basically face-guarding Armand. Davis. Creates space, allows Trace Jackson Davis to, to create for himself. Knocks down two points. So you cannot underestimate how much having a shooting threat like Armand Franklin, which is what he's become the last couple games on the floor, really helps Indiana. But yeah, that's that's it for this uh, IU film room. I, I thought IU did a nice job of making adjustments for the second half, specifically on the defensive end. Uh, their, their offensive effort, I think I tweeted it, was uh, unacceptable in the first half, especially with where they've been. Um, you know, they're they're close to a top ten rated Ken Palm defense. Um, so allowing a young Butler team uh, to kind of have their way with them uh, was a little bit frustrating from a fan standpoint. But certainly turned around in the second half. Um, and ultimately won pretty comfortably against the Bulldogs. So um, now we're diving into the Big Ten season after this. So uh, really excited to, to dive into these film rooms. The Big Ten is a gauntlet, best conference in the country, hands down, especially from top to bottom. Um, uh, it's the best scouted league in the country, so I'm interested to see what IU does with their offense in, in terms of, of counters and, and different actions that they're going to try to run. Uh, but ultimately, if they're able to spread the floor, I call it the trace and space offense where you've got Trace Jackson Davis working inside and everybody else's space properly and screening away and moving. Uh, I really like where the Hoosiers offense can get to. So um, that's all for this one in this edition of the IU Film Room. Please like, please subscribe, please follow me on Twitter, at Coach Adrania. As always, I appreciate you watching. Until next time, folks.